Okay, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Taz Rode from Database Center for Life Science. And uh, first, I, I have to note that uh, this work is supposed to be given by, uh, pre presented by Hiro here from the University of Tokyo, but uh, unfortunately he couldn't make it, so I'm here as a substitute. Sure. And the talk title is a support workload management system that supports continuous testing of workloads. And the, the, here's the background of the, the system uh, and the project. And uh, the, we have a DNA data bank of Japan, uh, DBJ in Japan, which provides a GGA, a database of the human genotype and phenotype, which is a counterpart of the NCBI's the DBGAP and the EBI's EJA. And so uh, they accept a, a bunch of submissions of the, the huge FROSQ files, which contains the uh, the human genomic data, and so users demand an interface on top of the database to analyze the data without CUI because the, the most of the users are the, the medical um, staff who are interested in uh, uh, extracting the information from the, the FASQ data. So um, we needed a system that is uh, user-friendly and also very reliable, and uh, the most importantly, we needed a system that the secure the, uh, supported the secure data handling. So um, we made a concept, uh, three concepts. That the first one is that data security is most important rather than the flexibility of the system. So uh, we, uh, we created a system which don't allow users to allow their own workloads, but the, the administrators only can add the, the workloads. And the users only select the input data ID uh, to run our workload. And the second, uh, that we wanted to reduce the cost of development, and so there are many, many existing workload languages, and then there are many landers, and then also we have uh, API standards. So we wanted to reuse those systems in, uh, to integrate our system. And uh, the final, uh, we wanted to ensure the reliability of the, the predefined workloads. So users cannot add the workloads, so, so users need to know uh, if the workload is running correctly. So um, this is the overview of the system. And the most important thing here is that we have three layers of the workload manager uh, in the bottom. And uh, the middle is the computing, and the top is the data, and they're uh, all separately and uh, um, connecting via the network or the API. So the, the workload manager in the bottom will uh, uh, send a request to the computing node via the, the GA4GH REST API, which is presented by Brian yesterday. And uh, the computing node will fetch the, the, the workloads and the input data uh, from the uh, data layer and will send the result output data to the data layer again. So um, the important thing is that the computing node will not store anything. So the, manage, uh, the managing workload information in the bottom and the data is in the top. So the computing node is it's totally um, uh, storing anything, not storing anything. And this is the, the software architecture, and then we use the, uh, the Docker compose to uh, deploy the uh, system easily. And uh, so here again, the only administrators can register workloads in the, the middle of the support service node. And uh, the web, uh, support web uh, node has a function that automatically check uh, if the registered workloads are working correctly. And this is the user interface, and the users can select the workloads predefined by the, uh, the administrator of the system. And the users can uh, put the, the input data, and in so you can see the, uh, the form, which has a URL of the FASTQ, and which uh, the users upload to the, the data node. And user can run the workload, and then manage the, the status of the workload running. So um, the, uh, that's it, and uh, we still have some challenges, and uh, so we wanted to test the workloads, and uh, currently the system only checked the, the workload is running correct, uh, with the status code zero, but the, so we found that, that we should have much more test cases, including the, the output data consistency, and also the failing test cases is always failing. So uh, here's the, uh, the GitHub repository, which contains the documentation and the source code with the MIT license, and uh, you can search for the Sapporo workflow on GitHub or Google. Thank you very much.